Religion versus Christianity. Interesting little study here. I'm going to show you what the Bible has to say about religion. It only appears a few times in the King James Bible. And uh, none of them are about Christians. You know, none of the references, in other words, are about Christianity. Let me show you. Acts chapter 26. Turn your King James Bible to Acts chapter 26. I'm not a uh, very good uh, organized religion pastor right now. A little bit nutty standing out here on about five feet of snow in uh, sub-zero temperatures, northern Maine. I don't have a church building, you know. I mean, but if we could just raise a few million dollars, then I could build a nice house of God that we could all worship in and whatever, you know, worship me in, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Not that Christians do that or anything. I mean, no. Well, actually, Christians don't, you know, because Christians are part of the body of Christ. I'm talking about Catholics here, but... <laughs> Anyhow, Acts chapter 26. We're going to look at all the references to religion in the King James Bible. Acts chapter 26, verse 4. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me be which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Um, so what's the first reference to religion? It's talking about the Jews. It's not talking about Christianity. Paul here has converted to Christianity, and he says, I lived after the manner of our religion, the Jews. Lost Jews, in other words. It's called lost, you know, in other words, Judaism is called religion. Rather interesting. Galatians chapter 1. Go to the next one here. Galatians chapter 1. Hopefully you're not getting any wind noise here. Galatians 1, verse 13 through 14. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion, there's another reference, above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Again, Christianity is not called a religion. Hmm. Interesting. You say, well, then those are both negative connotations there. Well, yeah, but uh, you see, here's the funny part. Um, Judaism right now is a false religion. You say, well, then it will be forever because the Jews have been done away. It's the church has replaced Israel. Just hold on there, Nazi. Just let's just think about this for a minute. Let's look at the other references to religion. If God's all done with the Jews, it should never come back in a positive text or you know context. James chapter one. James to the uh, twelve Baptist churches which are scattered abroad. Greeting. Oh, uh, no, it's not Baptist churches. It's uh, James to the twelve tribes. Hmm, twelve tribes. Huh. Future reference. But the Jews are done away with. No, unless you're a. Uh, Roman Catholic or a follower of Stephen Anderson. James chapter 1, verse 26 through 27. If any man among you seemeth to be religious, and brileth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Interesting, God and the Father. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world unspotted from the world. Huh. Yeah. What, would, what is the thing in the time of Jacob's trouble that they get? A mark upon the forehead? Keep yourself unspotted from the world? Nothing to it. Nothing to it. Um, wait a second here. So in other words, back in the Pauline epistles, religion, Jews' religion is for Basically, you know, references a lost, you know, to, to lost people. Paul's saying, I left the Jews' religion, in other words, essentially is what he's saying there. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, it's called pure religion and undefiled. You mean Judaism comes back? You mean um, people are starting to keep the Sabbath day in that time again? The time of Jacob's trouble, Israel comes back on the scene? Huh. And they are to keep themselves unspotted from the world? Kind of a problem if you believe in replacement theology. 
you know? Well, let's not get confused with facts now, shall we, okay? Yeah. But uh, let's look at the marks of, uh, I think it's, yeah, three marks of Bible-believing Christianity, okay? Three, three things that are different about Christianity, in other words. Okay, number one, Christians are uneducated. Galatians chapter 1. Show you the scriptures on this. This is the fun stuff. Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 through 17. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I attended Hiles Anderson Co Oh, excuse me. I have such a hard time reading here, you know. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Paul didn't get himself into a good New Testament local Baptist church? Uh, no, he didn't. He conferred not with flesh and blood. And uh, if you don't ever spend any time alone with Jesus Christ, your Savior, uh, there's a problem there. Okay? Um, if I don't ever want to be alone with my wife, uh, that would be kind of an issue. All right? We are spouse to Jesus Christ. All right? And you don't ever want to be alone with him? You're afraid to be alone? You have to be in a in a church every time the doors are open? That's a problem. It's not what Paul did. Verse 17. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. You mean he went out right away and started preaching the gospel that the Lord revealed to him? Uh-huh. And I'm not trying to say that you have to reinvent the wheel here. You know, I'm not trying to say every time you get saved, just don't talk to anybody or don't learn from any preachers of the past. I'm not saying that, you know, um, that's not scriptural, certainly. But what I'm saying is you have to spend some time alone. And this thing of you got to get into a good New Testament church or worse yet, you got to go to some Bible college or seminary or university. Every Bible college that there is on earth will mess you up in some way. Even the best of them. Even the very best one will mess you up somehow, some way. And if you come out, just, I'm going to do whatever they tell me to do. You're never going to amount to anything. You have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't have religion. We have relationship. Okay? You see, if I had religion, I couldn't be out here today. I'd have to go someplace and assemble myself together with other believers, you see, in a special designated place. I have a relationship. You understand? Acts chapter 4, verse 13. You say, well, that, that, was, just, that was just Paul. Paul was the exception to the rule. All the other Christians, they, you know, I actually had a, a Baptist, you know, pastor's son the one time, and he told me, he said, he said, Paul went to the university. He said, he went to Bible college. And I said, when did he do that? He said, when he was in the wilderness. <laughs> I said... Uh, I said, come on, man. I said, really? I said, you really believe that? Well, you know, it, it, in, in a way of saying, I said, he didn't go to some university. Give me a break. He went, never went to seminary. There are no Bible colleges in the in Scripture. And he said, well, I think that you're in sin for not going to Bible college. So it's not in Scripture, but I'm in sin for not going. Typical Baptist, not mind-controlled nonsense. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Let's see about this education thing. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And you know it's funny because what did they say about Jesus? How knoweth this man letters having never learned? Truth personified. God manifest in the flesh. The source of all life. The source of all wisdom. And they say he's not very educated. You know? Um, you know what's going to separate you as a Christian from lost religious people? They're going to say that you're uneducated. Oh, you hold to this being the perfect Word of God? The King James Bible is the perfect Word of God? Oh, you really need a little bit more uh, education. You see? Oh, you, you believe... Uh, Whatever, go down through the doctrines that we believe as we hold to as Bible believing Christians, and they say, Oh, you need to be more educated. 
Yet not much has changed. You see? They were called uneducated in the scriptures. That's the mark of real Christians. People will think that you're uneducated. They'll mock you. But when they see your boldness, when they see the stands that you take and that you don't compromise, they're going to take knowledge that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't need some church building someplace to identify with. You have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you know what irritates them a lot? When you say, Jesus showed me this. The Lord showed me this from His Word. Can I show you something? Jesus showed me this. Oh boy. Well, that's just your opinion. That's just you, you, you're, that's your interpretation of those verses. No, the Lord showed me. I'm right, you're wrong. Oh boy. They hate that. Number two. Number one, Christians are uneducated according to the lost world. Number two, hello, we don't have church buildings. You see any church building? No. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, verse 48 and 49. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? It's good to be in the house of God this morning, amen? Um, you're a lying devil. You say, well, oh, but brother, there's some godly men that have said that. They're lying devils. All of them. It's a lie. You can't prove to me one verse of Scripture in this King James Bible is a New Testament Christian where we're told to build a building, invite saved and lost to it, and call it the house of God. That's blasphemy. I'm going to build some stupid little building someplace, and I'm going to call it, this is where you meet God. This is the house of God. That is nonsense. And I get all these times, these little church building people, and they come on and say, well, it doesn't matter where we worship. We don't worship our building. Every single one of you people worship your building. Every single one of you do. You know for a fact that if somebody came along and they vandalized that building, they spray-painted profanity on the side, they broke the windows out, you would flip out and say, I can't believe that they would do this to God's house. You know you would. You know you would. Some child running around and they knock something over and you go, oh, you better be careful. Why? I thought it was just a building. Mm -hmm. You dress differently when you go there. You act differently when you go there. I wouldn't tell this joke when I'm in, in church. Please, give me a break. You know, some of you people, you think that you can get by me, you know? You can, you can tell me some kind of a lie that, you know, well, our church building isn't like that. You might have had bad experiences in your church buildings, but our church building doesn't. I've been to all kinds of church buildings. I've been to all different states. All, of, all I've been to other countries. They're all the same, every single one of them. Acts chapter 17. They're all corrupt. They're all crooked. They all cover up sin. And you won't find one single Christian in this, in this entire book. Not one Christian that has a church building. Not one. And by the way, what did they do to Stephen? He's there and he's speaking against God dwelleth not in temples made with hands. What did they do? They killed him. They murdered him. Just like a lot of you people out there, a lot of you papists would like to do to me. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Preach it, brother. Acts chapter 17, verse 24 and 25. God that made, that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. So it wasn't just Stephen that said it. It was Paul that reiterated it. Now, um, I think if something is mentioned twice in the book of Acts, maybe you want to take heed to it. And again, well, brother, we just have a real simple building. You put stuff in it, you adorn it, and you do all kinds of things for the greater glory of God. You know you do. You know you do. I mean, give me a break, you know? I mean, last church building we went to, uh, Country Chapel Baptist Church, Eldred, PA, um, went there and they had a, the pulpit was from a Jewish synagogue and it was and they carved KJV 1611 into the into the front of it. It was like, oh, you know. 
And it was, a, you know, all this different stuff with the building and all, all this special and all this sanctuary. I thank God for such a good sanctuary to preach in and all. You worship the building. You know you do. Liberty Baptist Church I used to go to. The one guy was an expert woodworker and he made this huge big wooden cross and behind it he had fluorescent lights put so that the cross was up on the wall and it glowed. And, and you know, that's on that wall and behind you is the stained glass and it... Catholic! It's Catholic! Give me a break. No scripture. And yet you'll stand in the pulpit and you'll lie and you'll say, we are Bible-believing Christians in all matters of faith and practice. Practice. You're lying. You're lying. You have a false religion. You're not a Christian. And if you are in the Bible building and you are saved, the Lord's going to get you out of that. You're hanging on and hanging on. You know, eventually the Lord's going to shake you out of that thing one way or another. I have talked to many, many Christians that said I was nuts because of my stand against the, Bible, the, the whole church building thing. And all of a sudden their little faithful family, church family, and the pastor does some kind of wicked thing and everybody says, oh, and the whole thing just breaks up. The Spirit of the Lord is saying right now, get out of these church buildings. Come out from among them. Get out of that thing. And if you're still clinging on to it, God's going to shake you hard. Okay? You know, like a dog, you know, and, he, and it, the dog's grabbing onto a, a rag or whatever and you're going like this at first and all of a sudden you say, hey, I need this back and the dog won't let it go. You go like that. Well, some of you dogs out there, you're clinging on to that church building with all you can. I don't want to let it go. It's my church family. It's my church family. I don't want to let go. And the Lord's going to say, <clears throat> and something major is going to happen. I promise you. I've seen it all my life. But let's look what happens here. Acts chapter 21 Acts chapter 21, verse 27 and 28. See, Stephen, he preached against church buildings, and they killed him. The apostle Paul, he spoke against church buildings, and they got away with it. Because he was there at the Mars Hill, you know, and, and, uh, and they couldn't get him right then and there, and you know. So, Acts chapter 21, verse 27 and 28. Check this out. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, Paul is talking about, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! <laughs> I love that. This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place. And further brought Greeks also into the temple and hath polluted this holy place. <laughs> um, you'd think that God would want Greeks to come into the synagogue. But you see, the Jews had their religion. And certain people were unclean to those Jews. Still are today. And they're looking and they're saying, here's Paul and he's coming along. And what was their number one complaint against Paul? Paul was from their religion, number one, and he condemned it. And what was the thing he condemned? Their holy place. Big, beautiful synagogue. God says, and Paul says, hey, see this? The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Right there. Look at that. This thing's nothing. This is this just... Bleh. Get rid of it. Hmm. Are you a Christian? Or do you have religion? Might want to think about that. And finally, number three. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 7 through 11. Religion versus Christianity... You'll see the difference here. Internal relationship versus external religion. Turn to it here. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 7 through 11. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ's. We are Christians because we belong to Jesus Christ. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed, that I may not, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech contemptible. 
This man who was educated at the feet of Gamaliel, high ranking Jew, you know, I mean, Paul could have gone places as a Jew. And what's he end up? Oh, you're just another one of those uneducated cult members, those Christians. Yep. Well, uh, brother, I, I think I'd like to be saved, but I want to keep my uh, education and I want to be very learned. And I don't care how well spoken you are or whatever else. People are going to look at you like a fool, like some kind of a, you're just an imbecile. You actually believe this stuff? You believe the Bible? <laughs> They'll look at you as being uneducated. They'll say, uh, 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 okay, you're, oh, you're a Christian. Oh, where do you go to church? I don't. Oh, huh. Uh, okay, um, then how do you know that you're a Christian? I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I talk to him all the time. He talks to me. Okay, well, it's nice meeting you. I got to go. Hmm. I'll say it again. Do you have religion or do you have Christianity? Are you a Christian? One more verse. Verse 11. Let such and one think this, that such as we are in word by letters, when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. You know, that's another thing that you're going to find in these church buildings. Um, in service and when you're there, they act a certain way. And you get around them when they're out in a place like this or when they're out shopping or when they're out whatever. They're completely different. They have two lives. You see, if you've seen the other study that I did where it talked about uh, the thing of, you know, Jesus Christ saying he's rebuking them and he says, you know, you have a, you know, basically you're using the faith for a cloak of, for sin. Uh, that is a very profound statement that Jesus said. Um, that's what Christianity is to most people. It is a cloak for their sin. Um, it's a real handy thing to say, you know, I have a, PhD. Oh, we're so honored to have brother so-and-so here today. He's got a PhD and a THD and a THM and a DD and a BA and a whatever else. Um, and you look at a guy like that, most people will respect him. And they'll say, well, he wouldn't do anything bad because he's an educated Christian. <laughs> you know? And then they'll look and they'll say, uh, oh, brother so-and-so over here, he's a good man. Why is that? Do you ever see the size of his church? He's got a thousand people going there Sunday morning. They got a bus ministry. They go out soul winning. They knock doors. They do all this. And yet the guy is wicked. And he's doing all kinds of things. Molesting children. Fornication. Lying. Stealing. Just standing up there preaching from a Bible that he doesn't even believe in. You know what the whole thing is? He's got religion. I, I you know... There's so many things I can, as I get older in my faith, I can just, I can look at what the Lord went through and I can relate to it in my own very small way. I'm not Jesus Christ, never will be. But, you know, I can, you can relate to some of the stuff he said where he just marvels at people's unbelief. He just, salvation is just right there. It's so simple. And they just take it and they say, I'm actually going to use this as a way to make money. I'm going to fleece people. I'm not going to tell them the truth. I'm going to preach in smooth, slick ways to get their money. I'm going to get a big church building, and I'm going to get those people in there. They're going to worship me. And they just, they, they use Christianity. You got to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, with the creator of the world. And yet, what do you do? You just want to use it as a cloak for your sin. You preach against repentance because you don't want your sin to be found out. I don't get it. I was just, I'm just going to gamble with my soul. And uh, maybe someday I'll eventually get saved or something like that or, you know, whatever else. I'll fake it till I make it, you know. And uh, I think it'll work out in the end. And all the time, all you're doing is just earning your damnation. I hate to tell you this, but uh, the vast majority of Christians, all they have is religion. There's no internal change. There's no relationship, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They don't want to bear his reproach. They don't want to come out to places like this and this is my church. I'm in church all the time. Oh, what shame, what, what horror. Yep. And they die 
after spending all their life playing Christian. And they die and they go to hell. I can't fathom that. You know, there was a man that I knew years ago. And uh, he was raised in church. Knew him well, actually. And um, he was all about the world. And uh, he wasn't real, real going to church all the time. And, uh, but, you know, when he'd go, he'd put on the good act and everything else. And, and, uh, but he was quite wicked. But, uh, you see, it didn't matter because when he went to church, went to this church where he was born and raised there, you know, so everybody knew his name and family was a big family name and everything else. And he was a real fake. He was a real fraud. And, uh, I, I have to confess something. I killed him. I murdered that guy in cold blood. You say, what was his name? Brian Denlinger. You say, well, that's your name. That's right. I uh, crucified the old man back when I was 26 years old because I came to the end of myself. And I said, I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to be a fake religion guy. And I remember, never forget the night. I was uh, out in my art studio. I was making, you know, wood turnings and wood carvings and wood sculpture and types of things like that. And I just got to the, the point where I just said, there's got to be something more to this, more to life than this, excuse me. There's got to be something more. And I remember I just went out and I looked up at the night sky and I said, God, I know you're real. I know you're there. Give me wisdom. I want truth. You know, the quickest way to get in touch with God is to ask for truth and really mean it. Because you see, Jesus Christ, one of his titles is truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, you say, I, I understand what you're saying, Brian, but I just, I'm not really interested in religion. Uh, well, if you've been listening to me, I'm not interested in religion either. I had it for most of my life. Well, a good portion of my life. I'm older now, so, you know. But uh, I got to the point where I said, I don't want religion anymore. I want to be a Christian, no matter what costs me. I'll let people call me unlearned and ignorant. I don't need church buildings. I don't need any of that stuff. I want to know that I'm going to go to heaven when I die. Nothing else matters anymore to me. And God saved me. You see, because I came in the right spirit. You come in your pride. You come with your, I want this as a cloak for my sin. He isn't going to save you. A lot of people have these funny notions that, you know, you just... You just believe or you just whatever, and, and he's forced to save you, no matter how you want to live your life from then on. That's not true. That is not what the Bible teaches. If I can just leave one thing with you, the viewer, let me just say it this way. There's nothing more important in this life than getting to know your Creator. Nothing at all. All the money, all the wealth, all the traveling, all the whatever, fame, it doesn't even matter. It's, it's nothing. It's all distraction to distract you from who is the creator of this earth. Who created all this? There's your answer right there. Found in the scriptures. The scriptures don't speak too well of religion. Unless you're Jewish and then you get, you know, it comes back in the time of Jacob's trouble. So, that's going to be it. I hope you take heed to these things and uh, work out your own salvation. Okay, with fear and trembling, it's talking about after you get saved, but, you know, I'll say it this way. Uh, you, better, you better make sure that you're saved uh, and not messed up in religion like I once was. So, that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.